thanks very much for uh, invitation and uh, offering this nice opportunity to uh, share my research interests and um, uh, activities. Uh, let me go to full screen mode. Okay, I, I hope everyone can uh, see the screen. Uh, right. Um, so since I joined Stevens in 2007, uh, my research interest was centered on to understanding uh, some surface features and functions of our nature so that uh, we can mimic uh, these natural surfaces for many engineering problems uh, as shown in this uh, summary slide. So uh, if you see our nature, uh, you can find many lessons that uh, nature use basically uh, small scale structures, micro scale or nano scale structures, which are combined with some unique surface chemistry and mechanical pliabilities so that uh, they can use those features to control many behaviors such as weddings, adhesions, friction, or so some uh, condensation, icing, or phase change problems for water like that. So my, I, I was interested in uh, understanding uh, how those microstructure, nanostructures, or so surface chemistry combined with structures could affect those behaviors. Uh, and then eventually I, want to, I wanted to create similar structures by using uh, advanced fabrication of manufacturing technologies, including polymers, ceramic, even also metals. And then uh, I really inter I'm interested in demonstrating those features for real uh, civil mechanical uh, energy or so bio biomedical applications as listed uh, here as some examples. So today I'll briefly go over those three uh, main uh, different aspects of my research portfolio. And then I hope you can understand uh, the main idea of this research uh, direction and future, uh, some potential application in uh, real, uh, our, our daily lives so that we can see really uh, benefits out of this technology. Uh, so basically there are uh, many different uh, technology and surface types that we can categorize. But uh, in this slide, I want to highlight three main uh, functional surfaces that we can learn from our nature. The first one is so-called uh, super hydrophobic surfaces. So as you see in this slide, if you see uh, many plant leaves such as lotus leaves, you can find that uh, their surfaces are covered with micro or also, also high, uh, hierarchical uh, structures. And also the surfaces are covered with some hydrophobic wax material. Then if you see uh, this uh, SM image, this is basically a liquid droplet on it. So because of the structure hydrophobicity, uh, surf, hydrophobic surface, liquid droplet doesn't wet the surface. Instead, air or gas layer is trapped between the structure so that a liquid can have, have minimized contact to solid surface so that liquid has very slippery behavior. So it can easily roll down off the surface if the surface is tilted a bit. So this is so-called super hydrophobic surfaces. And the key is uh, we need to use uh, physical roughness uh, combined with surface hydrophobicity. And then the key, the main idea is to entrap air between the surface structures so that we can uh, avoid or minimize the contact between liquid and solid surfaces. Uh, however, that idea is mainly working for uh, aqueous liquid such as water. Uh, recently, people also found that if you tune the surface profile like this by using reentrant like mushroom type of structures, then not only liquid, well, aqueous liquid, but also uh, organic solvents, alcohol, and so on, um, basically, every liquid can be repelled by surface. And then this is called uh, omniphobic surfaces. Then these two surfaces is basically uh, based on using the entrapped air layer between the structures. But people realize that uh, for some dependent applications, air can be depleted off or diffused into water. So that people also came up with some other idea, which is called slips. So it stands for a slippery, uh, liquid infused photosurfaces. In this case, uh, in terms of using uh, some sur structural surfaces or pattern surfaces the same, but in this case, instead of using uh, gas phase air, uh, we basically people infuse or impregnate uh, water emissible liquid such as oil into uh, structural surfaces, mainly photosurfaces. Then basically your structural surface basically uh, holds or retain uh, lubrication uh, liquid layer such as oil. 
then if you put like water liquid or water droplet or some other liquid and to, they do not pin on the surface because of the liquid layer on top and they is, easily slice off the surface from um, uh, by this lubricant layer. So today I'll uh, briefly uh, introduce those type of surfaces for applications. Uh, Again, uh, then why do we care about manufacturing? Uh, so because uh, in many applications, uh, if to avoid uh, wetting transition, that means in case of super hydrophobic surface, we want to use the uh, trap air layer uh, for lubrication, but air layer can be easily defeated off or pushed away. The one example is pressure. So if water drop is sitting on the surface with air pocket trapped, but in evaporation, then water drop becomes smaller, then internal pressure increases, then we lose air by pressure. So if you simply calculate uh, the force balance between pressure and surface tension force by structures, we can realize that our structure should be uh, nanoperiod structures. In other words, the periodicity of structure should be uh, uh, some microns. And then it's better to have high aspect rate structures so as it, we presented, if you can really tune the side profile to have negative uh, slope or intran uh, mushroom shape, then we can sustain the high pressure better uh, with our surface structures. Also, there are many other effects. So maybe uh, water, uh, air can be dissolved into uh, water or diffuse out into water. Also, we can have some condensation at the every surface. So we have to risk a high speed short flow that can take uh, air away from the surface. But the issue here is how to keep the air or how to keep the also uh, lubricant uh, liquid such as oil between the structures. So uh, if people found that it, the, the smaller structure is the better uh, to, to retain the air or oil layer between the structures. So that's why uh, it's very important to create nanoscale structures, especially for large areas. We don't want to create a structure for very small areas. Instead, we really want to create a structures for large area. So in our lab, uh, we uh, explored uh, several different technologies to create high aspect ratio nanoperiod structures to cover large area. Large area means like at least middle scale. So one idea is to use nanoscale templates. So we can just uh, coat nano template on the surface, then we can transfer the pattern to substrate. The other one is we can directly grow or we can directly coat some nanoscale particle materials on it that we can create the nanoscale structures. The other method is we can just use maskless etching. So basically we can use uh, wet etching or we can use plasma etching to create nanoscale structures to cover the large area. Uh, also, when we need to create uh, periodic structures, then in our lab, we use a so-called uh, laser interference drop technologies. It's a very simple techniques. We just shine the laser uh, and then we put the meter so the two beams make interference pattern to create this kind of periodic patterns. Uh, to create the, the pattern coverage area, we can use two beam and two meters, then we can cover a really, really full scale vapor uh, uh, area to create these period nanostructures. Uh, then after we do lithography there, we can transfer those patterns uh, by using many different methods. So one is to uh, use molding technique, or, or uh, we can also uh, transfer this pattern to other substrate by contact print. So then in this case, we can print uh, basically metal structures of, on, on the flexible PDMS surfaces or even transparent glass substrate as well. Also, we can use lip tops after we create these lithotic patterns that we can deposit some metal materials and we can really create this kind of, uh, nanoscale uh, sharpened tips uh, for our applications. Uh, if you use silicon structures or also metal, then we can use plasma uh, etching technique. Then we can also tune the sidewall profile that we can use this kind of uh, three dimensional shapes to improve this super opacity or to improve retain the uh, lubrication liquid layers between the structures. Uh, recently, we also developed this kind of so-called uh, circulation free uh, lift up uh, process. Basically, after we create this kind of nano panels on the four liver films, we directly lift off by using oxygen bubbles. Okay, then we can create this thin film of nanostructures uh, surfaces. Uh, then it's so thin and flexible, so we can easily roll or bend. Then we can still maintain this. Um, uh, integrity of our structure so that 
we can basically put them onto uh, three-dimensional bodies. So in this case, we have a uh, two-dimensional uh, cylindrical uh, bar that we can put them uh, uh, to surround our bodies. Even on three-dimensional ball or three-dimensional microstructures, we can wrap these uh, nano pattern films to cover every area. In case of metallic surfaces, then we can simply use electrochemical etching or electrochemical anodizing techniques. Then we can also create many different type of surface patterns over large area of metal, metallic surfaces. Uh, so anyway, so those are basically the typical technologies we use in our lab. Then basically we apply those for many different applications. This slide shows uh, we developed transparent uh, superphobic coating so that we can apply this coating to many different materials still then it makes our surface very, very hydrophobic. Uh, so if, if you put it on the glass, then our coating is not that uh, uh, opaque, uh, opaque so that it really allows high transmittance for light. And it also provides self-cleaning effects if you put some dirt and then if you put water drop that, it clean out the surface very easily. So it's basically uh, mimic the uh, lotus effect. So we also apply this uh, uh, coating for fabric so that if you put some uh, this kind of coating onto our fabric, so fabric is rough, so that if you put a flow polymer uh, hydrophobic coating, then we can make superphobic. So the other side is photophilic so that it can still uh, observe like our sweat also it also uh, deliver uh, vapors through the, the fabric, but the other out surface is hydrophobic so it can actually uh, repel water also it can also repel ice so we can think about uh, uh, not wearing anti-icing anti fabric uh, or clothing by using this technology you can also apply this coating for like cheap material like sand so if you put some uh, photocatalytic particles on it and then coat with also hydrophobic materials then we can basically put the disc kind of sand material on top of water so then we can actually uh, uh, preserve the evaporation loss. In many uh, applications, uh, so it's very important to uh, conserve the evaporation loss of water in in, in desert area. Then basically in desert area, we have like lots of sand. So we can uh, put this kind of coating then put, put on the water surface, free surface water, that we can minimize evaporation loss of water. Furthermore, this coating contains but the catalyst part, other particles such as uh, titanium oxide or zinc oxide, we can also uh, purify the dirt water uh, for applications. Uh, furthermore, because of this air layer between the structures, if you see this uh, video clip, regular surface water sticks and immobile, but if you put this water droplet on our surface, it's really slippery. So in terms of slip length, we found that it, we can achieve more than tens of micrometers of slip for microfluid applications. Not only microfluid applications, if you can apply this kind of coating for large areas, so this basically this level, uh, fit square, square fit plate, then if you tow it, we measure this drag coefficient, then we found that if you really use some uh, proper coatings, we can reduce drag up to 30% uh, for real applications, such as Navy applications. Uh, furthermore, you can use also this slip effect for the energy harvesting. So if you have a small channel and if, uh, if you have you use like uh, electrolytes such as like some uh, water uh, with some salt, then we can create this uh, ions at the near, near the interface. And if you have this air layer, we can create a slip effect, we can create slip flows. We can collect a lot of ionic flows, which, which is called streaming conons then we can collect them for electric power and electric uh, potential. So we found that uh, if you slip uh, by using super hydrophobic surfaces or even also slip surfaces, the slip effect increase, enhance this energy conversion also output power. Also we can use this for um, icing. So if you see this video clip, uh, we tested our surface for icing, uh, anti-icing in wind tunnel. So if you see this video slip, it did a clip, uh, depending on surface type, um, we can really create uh, anti-icing surfaces for uh, avionic applications or other anti-icing applications. If you see this right now, 
this one really does not get eyes much compared to bare aluminum. Uh, we also found um, eventually ice grows over time on even on super part of surfaces, but if you really apply some me small mechanical energy like vibration or some uh, small heat, then ice layer can easily disconnect it from surface. So it can be also used for de-icing surface. So if, if you imagine we put this coating for airplanes, it uh, pre uh, minimize icing also, it helps to de-ice de with less energy and so on. Uh, also, we can also use this for corrosion. So since our surface is covered by protected by air layer or some like, liquid oil layer like that, then we can prevent the corrosion of our substrate a lot. So we actually tested our surfaces for many uh, harsh environment like salt fog tests. Up to several weeks, uh, our surface really shows the no significant corrosion behaviors in real environmental applications. Uh, and so if you also compare the super hot surface to slip surface, the good thing about this slip surface, which is using liquid oil layer, uh, basically it shows self-healing uh, capability. So if you make this kind of cracks intentionally, and then if you put very high acid liquid, you will see that on top of the surface, we see a significant corrosion. But in, on, in, on uh, slip surfaces, because of this uh, liquid oil layer, uh, which easily fill the damage area, it still shows anti-corrosion effects a lot. Also, it can also be uh, used for antibiofouling or antimicrobial or antibacterial applications. Basically, if you use this kind of structural surfaces, bacteria cannot uh, sit on the surface, especially uh, compared to flat, if you use porous or pillar surfaces, uh, especially with some flows, then really avoid uh, adhesion of bacteria and cells and, and so on. Especially if you use hydrophobic surface, basically uh, no virus, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, no bacteria can be found on the surface with some flow. Okay. Even uh, compared to super hydrophobic surface, the slip surface is, is, is even better. So slip surface is covered with some oil layer so that bacteria cannot basically contact the solid surface uh, at all. So not only bacteria, if you put some uh, sticky uh, food or sticky material uh, liquids on top of surface, it also shows uh, very stick, uh, slippery behaviors. Right now it, you see a ketchup on regular surface, but if you put ketchup on our slip surfaces, then it slides off very easily. So you can think about using this form for food processing application like that. And the bottom video shows uh, we have this kind of a uh, uh, basic uh, this frog is basically uh, invasive species. Then typical surface this frog can stick on very well, okay. But on top of our slip surfaces, it's so slippery, so this insect uh, cannot stick at all. So it slides off whatever he does. So it's, it can be applied so this kind of non-sticky application for materials. Uh, and then we also found that uh, our structures are really anti-reflective or uh, light trapping so that if you uh, see this uh, dessert, so our visible uh, wavelength, then absorption is almost 100%. Okay, so then you can think about using the surface for like solar cell application, then it can avoid icing, it's self-cleaning also, it can enhance light trapping effect for solar cell applications. Uh, I think time is almost done, so I will stop here. There are many other, a couple of other applications, but I'll stop here. Uh, so again, I want to acknowledge my collaborators and funding sources that um, also, I also appreciate my team members, um, which really uh, contribute a lot to all these uh, research uh, outcomes. Thank you very much. Well, thanks very much, Chong Huang. Very exciting work. And uh, certainly, uh, I like the little cute frog <laughs> experiment <laughs> that you did, uh, you did with. And I hope the, the frog is alive and well somewhere in the, in the, in the wilderness, right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so we have uh, uh, time for a couple of uh, questions from the audience, please. Yeah, I have a question. This is uh, Kevin Connington from Mechanical Engineering. 
Uh, hi, Chang Wan. Uh, very, really exciting uh, experiments. I, I really like uh, all of this work. Uh, my question is about the drag reduction on the uh, for the naval applications. Uh, what what is characteristic about uh, the roughness in those applications? Because I know uh, there are large you know hydro hydrostatic pressures that often cause the transition from the Cassie to the Wenzel state. What what is special about the the or unique about the roughness uh, in, in those particular applications to prevent that? Yeah, so uh, that's very, very good question. Uh, uh, as long as the surface is really robust so that it can still trap the air, then we see it really the benefit of this drag reduction. But as we indicated, if this cast state transits to render state, then basically water wet the surface, then our coating basically create artificial roughness. So usually the roughness really increase uh, turbulence friction. So in that case, basically, uh, we can ex we cannot expect any benefit. Actually, it worse because it increased like more. So in this application, it's very critical to retain the gas layer on the surface. So this is very challenging. So many uh, colleagues these days are working on uh, some methods how to keep the air, how to or recreate the water air layer if we we lose the air. So I think this is still we need some future work uh, to overcome that kind of uh, limitations. All right. Thank you.